ఓకే హెవెన్ ఓకే thank you dear heavenly father thank you in this time lord in this morning we give glory to you lord as we are going to learn your word from the book of acts lord help us to understand whatever we learn holy spirit give us wisdom and knowledge that we could understand lord and apply in our life also lord thank you i submit all the student and also personal slot in your mighty hand lord thank you i submit all the time in your hand. jesus name i pray amen yeah thank you thank you prince uh let's uh, get started so you know we've been uh, reading about paul's uh time at corinth okay that's that's what we saw and then we said that you know he went and he completed his second a journey he goes up to jerusalem and then to antioch and all of that uh and he uh you know never really has it has the time to stop by in a place called ephesus okay however now we are going to see him stopping by here at ephesus and in acts chapter 19 there is uh, a lot more that we will study about this particular city you know we uh, saw how he ministered in uh, thessalonica we uh, saw how he ministered in uh, 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 what is that place athens right depending on the crowd uh, every city has its its uh, makeup every city has its need and uh, god is doing something wonderful uh, in each city and there are churches being planted there are disciples uh, you know who are following uh, god there are people who are maturing in god ministers who are taking their position so it was not just paul doing the ministry we have read uh, of names like silas and timothy and even luke remember he left uh, luke behind in philippi and uh, many other names that we are going to see so all this work is going on and this also gives us a picture of uh, the personality of paul okay because this course that we are studying not only is it about the book of acts but it's also about uh, we said paul and and uh, the life of apostle paul so you know we have we have a background uh, of who he is and what he became when he uh, was serving right when he was serving uh, in the in the you could say the the uh, positions of authority as an unbeliever and what his passion was and how he thought he was doing the righteous thing and he was persecuting the uh, church but later on how god transformed his life and then he went through his own period of uh, uh, training and equipping in silence we saw that you know cilicia regions of arabia so he was he was in uh, uh, tarsus hidden away you know doing the work of god and definitely continuing ministry continuing the work of god but we didn't read much about him later he came on the scene through barnabas and uh, uh he uh, led these missionary journeys okay and we saw his first missionary journey we saw his second missionary journey in the last class i gave us a, a little somewhat uh, you know an understanding of the timelines of these missionary journeys uh, and uh, we saw how he completed his second missionary journey and now uh, he is off on the third one so uh, before we get into further study uh, i would really like for us to look at the maps once again so let me quickly okay we have all all the three here so let me put all of them it just gives us a very good idea and i'm going to post your assignment also uh, today i want to post your assignment on the google classroom so it will give you enough time to complete it before the end of the semester we are almost you know we are going close to uh, how paul will complete his third missionary journey and then you know uh, what will happen to him the trial that he will go through and then we will come to the close of uh, the book of acts uh, shortly so uh, you will be able to answer the assignment that i post for us so let me just quickly go to yeah 
Yes, yes, sir. And this will be your second assignment. Uh, and be, uh, you will be able to. Yeah, just hang on. Okay, let me start with first. It's good to repeat this over and over again, just so we have. It's not allowing me to share the screen class. I don't know what has happened. Just a moment, please. Okay, yeah, we are able to see it. Okay, can you see it now? Is that a yes? yes no. Okay, no. great. Yes, okay, okay, wonderful. Okay, so just have a look. I'm repeating myself basically. The first missionary journey, uh, Antioch, you know, then they go through Cyprus, then we know that John Mark left them, right? Uh, so, I mean, uh, they go on then later to Perga, Pisidia, a lot of uh, opposition, Iconium, Derby, right? Uh, Lystra, Derby, and then again, go back, come all the way back here. Then they don't go through Cyprus, but they are out. Okay, so that would be your uh, second missionary journey. Oh, sorry, first missionary journey. Now, let me quickly take you to the second one. Okay. Yeah, so this gives us some good clarity. Again, you know, Antioch is like your base church. So they decided, okay, let's go back to the churches where we had been. And this time around, you know, Paul and Barnabas had that sharp um, argument over John Mark, right? So you see the personalities. You know, John Mark, now we don't know why uh, Paul got so upset, but it shows his personality that he was somebody who was so focused on the ministry. He was, um, you know, a person who was focused on the task ahead and he did not like, you know, any slack or any um, uh, like a, a, uh, an attitude of, of um, um, you know, how, how do we put it? Basically, he is passionate, you know, like like an army general. He does not like any kind of compromise. So he didn't appreciate uh, John Mark leaving the missionary journey midway. And now uh, he does not want him at all. And so Barnabas, you see his personality. He's so accommodating, right? He's very, very accommodating. Uh, and there's a contrast. And then anyway, that uh, we've discussed about it. And then, you know, Barnabas uh, uh, goes on another journey of his own. And this is... Paul, but he takes along with him Silas. So Silas becomes his companion. Uh, so they they move, you know, they keep uh, moving on. They go to those old places. You can see very clearly here, same old names, your, your Derby, Lystra, Iconium, Pisidian, Antioch. And we know that uh, he goes through, he wants to enter through the Asia Minor region and impact Asia at this point. So he's trying to go. He's trying to go uh, through uh, that Bithynia region and Mysia. And in his heart, he wants to touch Asia. That is his uh, dream. But he's not able to do that because Holy Spirit leads him in a different way. He gets a dream to Macedonia. So this is the Macedonian region. And then you can see all the different cities here. We talked about a couple of cities, Philippi. Then from there, he goes to Beria. We Thessalonica, okay, Thessalonica, then Beria, we see how the people in Beria were receptive about the word of God. And from there, he goes to the Achaia, Achaia region. And over there, you know, uh, he uh, 
goes to Corinth. Now, Corinth is a is a wonderful place where he ministers for a prolonged period of time. Uh, uh, via Athens, via Athens, he go, goes to Corinth and then he has a vow. Remember, we said he uh, has a vow because he honors the Jewish traditions uh, through in Sankria, he cuts his hair and then, you know, he wants to make a journey back to basically his goal is Jerusalem. He goes to Jerusalem to, uh, to fulfill his vow. But he he chooses a certain route. So what is that route? He stops at Ephesus. Okay, he stops at Ephesus. Now he found some people in Corinth. Who are they? Uh, yeah, he found like Aquila, Priscilla, those those people who were also tent makers with him, and together with them they taught the word. He takes them along. Okay, over here in Ephesus to do ministry. He moves on, but he lets them stay, and then you know he makes his journey back. Comes here to uh, Caesarea then uh, Jerusalem, and then he goes back to his Syrian Antioch-based church. Okay, so that would be your uh, second missionary journey completed. Now, let's very, very quickly look at the third one. Then you will have a good idea when we are discussing. Okay, so this would be your third one, right? Okay, mainly you see the arrow here, Antioch, Tarsus, Phrygia. He looks like the, okay. So you can see the arrows. They've included, seems like Okay, something uh, funny here because uh, the arrows are kind of different. So anyway, don't worry about it. Uh, so now he goes via some of the common places and then he spends a lot of time in Ephesus. Okay, so just remember that he spends a lot of time in Ephesus. And the third missionary journey back. So you see here, he's coming back this way. Ephesus, you can see this region, Miletus, uh, uh, Trogilium, this whole region. So he will spend time in Ephesus. He will spend time in this region okay, for some time. Now, we don't see specifically the names of places in the region, but he spent some three months in the region. In uh, Ephesus itself, he spends two years. Earlier, in the previous missionary journey, he didn't spend time because uh, he quickly wanted to go to Jerusalem. So now he's spending time in Ephesus and then he's coming this way and you will see him making a journey back. Okay, he'll go to places like Tyre. Okay, he'll go uh, to Caesarea and then to Jerusalem. So this is how his third missionary journey is going to take place. Okay, and I will uh, show you a clearer map later. So don't get all confused. Uh, about it. Right now, we are discussing only about Ephesus and this region here, and then the way he is going to make his journey back. We will read his names, you know, Tyre, and then all the way back to Jerusalem. So if you remember this portion, this is more than sufficient. Okay, come. Let's uh, go back to Acts chapter 19 here, and we will discuss. Right. So the second missionary journey is through and now we're reading we at the end of Acts 18, we said that um, there was uh, another person who got introduced, Apollos. We, we saw how um, uh, Paul sent him to Corinth because at Corinth uh, you didn't have, you didn't have uh, the, well, Paul himself spending um, time. At Corinth, it was a difficult situation, isn't it? So uh, he, there was all this chaos that was that was um, created by the people there, and uh, in fact, Paul was so fearful to continue on in Corinth. And remember how God encouraged his heart. He gave him a word and said, "I have many people here, so be bold, be strong." So God gave him a word in Corinth. There was rising opposition, and people really wanted to throw him out. But God, uh, in a supernatural way, uh, put you know put this uh, 
this this uh, I, I don't know what you call it but the way scriptures say in proverbs that the heart of the king is in the hands of the lord and he turns it uh, any which way he wants the uh, the authority at that time when people took the matter to the authority we saw how the leader in corinth he said look if it's a, if it is a matter about a crime or 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 you know something that has to do with the law you please bring it to me but if it is a religious matter no i am not the right person you you deal with it okay you settle it among yourselves so the people were enraged because of the kind of response which uh, the authority gave so god gave an escape to Paul in in uh, some way, and he did not get tried, and he did not get killed in Corinth. So that that's what we observed in the city of Corinth. Now, the city of Corinth, we said that it was a very um, a sinful city. There was a uh, there there was a uh, uh, you know. Uh, Uh, immoral sexual practices there and uh, all these things you know were were quite tough for paul so you see as a church planter uh, when when he goes to a particular city that city has its own challenges the city has its uh, you know um uh, uh, own own uh, difficulties that a church planter needs to work through and added to that there was opposition in this particular city and that's what we saw now let's look at ephesus Okay, we are coming here to Ephesus. Now here uh, we uh, we see at the very beginning of uh, Acts chapter nineteen that uh, Apollos was in Corinth, so he was sent there for some time to do God's work. Then uh, Paul. having passed through the upper regions so in that map you know i i didn't mention to you um uh, all the the places that he went but you saw more or less you saw the arrow it pointed to certain cities but there's no mention of those particular cities here but it generally says the upper regions passed through the upper regions so you know probably that is why in the map they have uh, they have touched uh, you know all the other cities that we talked about so he passed through the upper regions and it's starting the explanation of the third missionary journey uh, from primarily from the city of ephesus so we have to understand this is the third journey that he is going through okay so here when he comes to ephesus remember he made a quick stop in ephesus in the second missionary journey so were the disciples in ephesus yes there were he uh, also brought along with him uh, aquila and priscilla right so there was some work which was done in the city of ephesus now when paul meets the disciples there and we are clearly told that there are some disciples he asks them a unique question we don't see paul asking this question earlier he asks them did you receive the holy spirit when you believed and it's interesting you know why would we ask believers whether they have received the holy spirit obviously uh, the born again experience has to do with the work of the holy spirit so every believer uh, has encountered the holy spirit in that manner the holy spirit dwelling within that person so what is this additional question that paul is asking did you receive the holy spirit i mean isn't it understood paul they are disciples so they have uh, the whole they have the holy spirit in them but you see uh the baptism in the holy spirit is what paul is referring to so he is asking did you receive the holy spirit when you believed as a pointer to the baptism in the holy spirit earlier we saw when samaria received the gospel the apostles sent people there so that they could be baptized in the holy spirit so this practice of uh, baptizing the believers in the holy spirit was very important and the early church made sure that the believers went through uh, you know all these they were aware that okay you know once you're born again you must be baptized in the holy spirit so it's a separate experience you know people ask the question how can you say that indwelling of the holy spirit is different from baptism in the holy spirit we have one example here that believers are being asked uh, whether they have received the holy spirit so look at the answer that the believers give they say we have not even heard as much know about the holy spirit so how can this happen see basically the teaching right maybe maybe they had received uh, inputs on other things but they were not really taught on the holy spirit the work of the holy spirit 
and the baptism in the Holy Spirit. So what happens? Uh, then Paul continues to uh, find out a little more, research a little more. So he says, then if you didn't hear about the Holy Spirit, then what baptism were you baptized in? You see, again, he's pointing to the baptisms. We know that there were two essential baptisms which every believer needed. One was uh, the baptism in water in the name of Jesus. Second is the baptism in the Holy Spirit. So when he asked them about baptism, they say into John's baptism. So these believers, they were not even baptized properly in water. So now, you know, uh, Paul gives them more clarity. He tells them, okay, you know, John's baptism, that was meant for repentance. So, all right, you know, how about, you know, we go ahead and baptize you uh, in water in the name of Jesus. So when they heard this, these disciples, they were baptized in water in the name of the Lord. And in verse 6, we see that Paul laid hands on them and the Holy Spirit came upon them. So both the baptisms okay, were uh, received by the disciples in Ephesus. So here starts the journey. Now, uh, these two experiences. Now, from here, we can understand that believers today, you know, uh, we can equip them in similar things. Maybe they know about being born again, but you uh, notice that they were led into baptism in water for repentance in the name of Jesus, of course, not John's baptism. And uh, we, we see that they must also be led into the Holy Spirit baptism. So here, there were 12 uh, such people uh, whom uh, Paul led and he baptized them in the Holy Spirit. Now moving on, he goes and he starts ministering in the city similar to all other cities. So where does he generally begin his ministry from? He will have a, a survey of the place and if there are Jews then the common place would be the synagogue. So he goes to the synagogue and he starts speaking there boldly for three months. You see his his approach was also we, we saw this earlier. He was convincing people, he was talking to people. Here again you know, he's reasoning, persuading. Okay, These are all ways of, of uh, unfolding God's word, unfolding the truth to the people that the Lord Jesus is the Messiah and that they need the forgiveness of sins. And along with that, they need the empowering of the Holy Spirit and uh, they need to live their lives as disciples and go make more disciples. So we know these are all the things that we could have expected Paul to be teaching the people. So in the synagogue, he's doing his part. He is revealing things about the kingdom of God and equipping the people. However, similar to what happened in Corinth, you know, in Corinth, the Jews were so hard hearted. They did not want Paul. So he said, okay, fine. You know, I'm going to the Gentiles here again. In the synagogue as he's ministering just think about it you know three months he's persuading them he's working hard you know uh, some of us when we um, get a set of believers and we are serving them you know, we are so excited that we are going to build up these people in the things of god three months uh, you know writing up a sermon studying god's word and speaking to them it's not easy isn't it we we just invest so much of energy in it after doing that for three months he sees the response of these people uh, and they are not happy with him okay they have hardened hearts so what does he do uh, you know he he realizes there's no point coming here to the synagogue and teaching them so you know we don't know how god led him uh, but he goes to a place called as the school of tyrannus here he begins to teach so Seems like uh, in the school of Tyrannus, whoever came there, they had a willing heart because in the synagogue, they had people had hard hearts. And here he has the opportunity. People are willing to listen to him. So how long did he teach in Tyrannus? We are told for two years, two years, he continued teaching there. And all who dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. So. What is the kind of ministry that is taking place in Ephesus? Amazing ministry. We've not heard so far that he stayed in any given city for so long. But in Ephesus, 
he stayed okay he stayed and what kind of a city is ephesus you no know, we will read later that it was a city given to worship of uh, uh, the goddess diana okay the goddess diana uh, and it's a city similar to corinth you know corinth a city where there was sin athens a city which was given over to its philosophies you have ephesus where again you have worship to a, a, a goddess called diana uh, but you know paul in the midst of this setting he is continuing to expound the word of god he is continuing to teach the word of god and it says in the school of tyrannus how often did he teach daily so can you imagine daily for two years uh, how many teaching hours is that no at least us here we uh, we teach for five days in a week uh, 3 hours you know you all are attending online classes um, and that's about it but you see paul ministering to the people daily and it is likely that people would come uh, those in the day time you know may, maybe he didn't spend that much of time because people would work but once they came back from work we don't know how long how many teaching hours paul put in but the passion which he had and you know the the revelation because to be able to teach one hour you need to have that revelation from god's word the understanding from god's word about those matters but you notice here he must have put in hundreds of teaching hours to equip the disciples in ephesus and it is not just the disciples in ephesus but you know this place in uh, uh, asia asia minor uh, you you find that the access for people all over asia it it is it's quite good so a lot of people it, in fact the way the scripture puts it is all who dwelt in asia so it talks of the impact okay uh, people across asia heard the word of god from this one school of tyrannus so what a marvelous impact that uh, uh, paul and his ministry has had in the uh, city of ephesus that the word of god is being preached so beautifully and people are being equipped the the city was such that you know people could come they could hear the word and they could go uh, impact others you know, this is like a beautiful example of if you want to call it a bible college okay so in the school of tyrannus school of tyrannus was a building which uh, paul got maybe you know somebody who responded to the gospel gave him permission to preach from there but it touched the entire region of asia because people could come there be equipped and go back so we see paul uh, you know uh, teaching the word of god the truth about the kingdom of god what else could he have spoken he could have spoken about the life of jesus and in that much of time two years it is likely you no know, he himself was well versed in hebrew he himself was well versed in the scriptures so he would have taken you know passages verses he would have taken you know words and he would have really um, imparted into the people the truth of god's word so he did an ex extreme extremely wonderful ministry equipping equipping teaching uh, you know reasoning with the disciples on a daily basis and it also shows us you know the way in which god had prepared paul to minister in such a way to his listeners so overall you know it's wonderful ministry this place is given over to idol worship and especially diana um, but you know paul in the midst of that he is having an incredible ministry going on so where there are a lot of disciples we can infer yeah looks like there were a lot of disciples uh, and, and not just from that region others also had joined them what else is god leading paul in in ephesus so teaching ministry you know just the way jesus taught jesus preached paul is also doing that in continuation just like jesus's ministry along with that there were uh, uh, there was a demonstration of god's power so in verse 11 we see that god did unusual miracles through the hands of paul okay so uh, miracles in itself is the manifestation of the supernatural but you see 
unusual miracles handkerchiefs or aprons which were brought from his body to the sick you know? so we we see that diseases were healed evil spirits went out of people now how is that possible because of the anointing you remember when we read about jesus in mark chapter 5 a lady came uh, for um, healing and uh, she had the flow of blood how did she finally receive her healing she touched the hem of jesus's garment what is there in the garment you know, we can simply uh, say that it was the anointing right god's anointing or, or power went out of his body scriptures say so what is that power the anointing of god the presence of god the healing power of god similarly when uh, uh, cloth was taken out of paul's body that is the understanding we had we have that the power of god somehow now we don't understand all the dynamics of it but uh you know it could have carried it could have carried uh that power and then as they took the cloth and touched those who who needed healing people were actually healed so god is working beautifully through the life of paul here uh and you know uh we also see in that same passage that people were closely observing paul okay and the work which he was doing so at that time there were also people in the city of ephesus who were spiritual but they were engaging in the dark uh, side of of things you know of the spiritual realm very similar to samaria because in samaria you had simon the sorcerer who was known as god people even worshiped him as god uh, because of his supernatural powers and similarly it seems like ephesus also was awake to the the spiritual um, uh, realms and so there are some exorcists okay exorcists are people who cast out demons jewish exorcists uh, and it also seems like you know they they were kind of professional in doing this doing this work now did they really cast out demons we know that that is not possible without the spirit of god because jesus when he did it he said that i am doing this by the spirit of god so maybe they could have just you know uh, 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 done the whole um, uh, uh, you know when when the exorcism is going on people do these things right like what is your name uh, where are you from so people people feel that oh okay you know this person is able to cast the demon out but whether the demon is gone out or not you know how would people know so exorcists would engage in things like that but we know that it's only by the power of god that demons can actually be cast out so they might have observed uh, the work of paul and wanted to copy it so what did they do you know they noticed that uh, paul was casting out demons in the name of jesus so they tried doing it themselves Okay, they tried casting out the demons and they knew that there was something about the name of jesus so um how did they how did they speak to the demons you know they said something like we uh, exercise you by the jesus whom paul preaches okay were they correct in in saying that yes technically correct they are, they know the uh, the steps of casting out a demon in the name of jesus a demon must be cast out but what really happens you know when they do it this way there were seven sons of skiva okay who who did this they were the sons of the jewish chief priest but when they tried exercising by using the technique that paul was using which is in the name of jesus you know the demon spirits they actually responded and they said that jesus i know and paul i know but who are you okay that's amazing because it it tells us that in the kingdom uh, uh, uh you know in the spiritual realm even the demonic spirits recognize those who have a relationship with god so these seven sons of skiva they obviously were not born again and they were trying to use the technique of the using the name of jesus but the demons did not listen to them so demons recognize people with authority okay people from the kingdom of god with authority so that is our observation here the, the demon said jesus we know paul we know but who are you 
okay but who are you so that is uh, uh, how marvelously paul's ministry happened in ephesus that the professional exorcists were trying to copy the work which he was doing okay let's continue to see the impact you know great impact in teaching great impact in manifestation of the works of the spirit because even unusual miracles what are usual miracles you know some healings and um, deliverances that is usual now when the scripture says unusual it does not even give us what explanation now, when we read of some of the uh, the miracles that elijah elisha they did that was so unusual isn't it like acts floating and all now maybe uh, some similar things have happened in the ministry of paul but we don't have an explanation over here powerful teaching powerful demonstration of the spirit to the extent that those who were interested in the spiritual realm those who were professionally engaging you know in the dark powers they were trying to copy paul so did paul have a successful ministry in uh, uh, ephesus yes we could say that okay we could uh, definitely this uh, come to that conclusion now let's move forward these evil spirits you know, they recognized uh, jesus and paul but they did not recognize these people because they were not part of the kingdom of light okay or they were not born again the seven sons of skiva so how did they uh, uh, respond to the seven sons of skiva we are told that the evil spirit you know overpowered them and you know it really beat them up made them even uh, naked and wounded and this became known throughout ephesus okay and uh, it brought a lot of fear in the hearts of the people so it's likely that there were many who were happy about the spiritual powers which they were experiencing till that time which we already obviously know uh, the source is not god okay from satan and the demons they were exercising some amount of spiritual powers now when they saw how the demons spoke to the sons of skiva and said that we know paul we know jesus who are you and then the demons beat them up so they understood that this man paul you know he really belongs to a superior kingdom he belongs to uh, whatever he is speaking about jesus is real okay uh, and the authority which uh, he carries the authority in the name of jesus is real so they realized that they were going wrong in the pursuit of the spiritual or the supernatural so what happens the moment they hear of this thing oh the sons of skiva the sons of the high priest got beaten up that means that all along what we've been doing you know that is not a uh, part of god's kingdom so fear fell on them and we read that the name of the lord jesus was magnified in that city and many started confessing they started telling their deeds they started believing in jesus so um, this victory this victory uh, you know it 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 was it was really a victory of the gospel where people's hearts were being changed and transformed similar to what happened to simon the sorcerer he also accepted christ right he responded to the gospel so a lot of people who were practicing you know uh, these spiritual matters they started following christ and uh, uh, you know many of them a lot of people believed among whom were these these uh, uh, people who practiced black magic now what did these people who practiced black magic do they brought their books together and they burnt it in the sight of everybody so it's a it's a, a very visible sign of repentance in the city okay and when you count up the value of everything we are told that up to 50000 pieces of silver which was big money okay very very big money uh, that much you know or, or that was the value of what was being burnt in the city of ephesus so you see how wonderfully god has worked there was if you want to sum it up and just put one line to it there was true repentance okay that was demonstrated that was seen in the city of ephesus how was it possible because god's word went out powerfully god's power went out powerfully in the city of ephesus so 
successful ministry powerful ministry lives being changed transformation you know, we talk about city transformation has there been city transformation yes because people's hearts have been changed city transformation is transformation of people and you see them you know believing confessing repenting telling their deeds wow they have truly encountered god in the city of ephesus so on one hand all this amazing work is going on now let's see you know, what happens uh, in the same city when these things were being accomplished we are told that uh, uh, you know paul he he kind of you know he already had in his heart that i must continue this journey i must go uh, past you know macedonia achaia those regions as well uh, and go to jerusalem and after that you know i must also see rome so he was making his plans led by the holy spirit at that time uh, and you know he had a uh, two people who ministered with him go out into macedonia okay so who are these people he uh, he sent into macedonia two people timothy and erastus but he himself continued in his mind he wanted to go but not right now so he sent out timothy and erastus and he continued in ephesus and at this time on the one hand ministry is going on very well look at what else happens in the same city and verse 23 we see that there was a great confusion that arose in the city of ephesus okay there was a man by the name of demetrius he was a silver smith and uh, he was uh, you know one of those people who made silver shrines of diana remember i told you that uh, uh, people worship this goddess okay there was there was um, the worship of this goddess um if you go into the details of it you know the background is something like some black meteorite stone okay uh, what you know that it it was there and then they carved out an image out of that stone and a god of fertility okay the god of fertility um is the one that they worship so they would make idols of of uh, this this fertility goddess uh, in other words and they would worship so uh, there was a lot of business of making these idols so demetrius was a silver smith he worked with silver and he made shrines of diana over there and you can imagine you know if you make an idol out of silver and you sell it you will have so much of money so when people started believing uh, in jesus you know a lot of them went away from worship of diana so the business got affected you you can imagine it must have really been affected deeply no wonder they were undergoing a loss so demetrius you no know, he gets upset that uh, uh, his business is going down so what he does is he calls people together uh, similar workers in the same profession of making idols and then you know he say, he tells them men you know that we have our prosperity by this trade what is that trade making idols moreover you see and hear that not only at ephesus but throughout almost all asia this paul has persuaded and turned away many people saying that they are not gods which are made with hands so not only is this trade of ours in danger of falling into disrepute but also the temple of the great goddess diana may be despised and her magnificence destroyed whom all asia and the world worship so you know there is a very um, real threat to the business of making idols of diana and also to the very worship of diana and that is also the result of the ministry of paul so on the one hand work is going on well on the other hand opposition is rising similar to corinth you know you see it very clearly here when the people heard this okay uh, they they were they were um, filled with anger or wrath and you see them screaming out you know great is diana of the ephesians because there was a threat right there was a threat to uh, their their original if you if you may call it uh, goddess of worship over there and you know this really uh, affected 
the uh, ministry and the decision that that Paul is going to take about staying back in Ephesus. So opposition is rising and the city is filled with so much of confusion that people, they rushed into the theater uh, and they could not beat up Paul. So they they caught hold of the companions of Paul. We are told uh, Gaius, Aristarchus, okay, they were uh, Macedonian companions of Paul. Okay, they were beaten up. Okay, they, they were brought in. They were seized. Okay, were they beaten up? Let me be clear about that. No, no, we don't We don't really read that. They were seized. Okay, I, I correct myself. They were seized. They were seized. And uh, uh, there's all this... this um, uh, mob sort of a mentality which earlier we've seen in every city the people who disliked Paul and his ministry they created a mob and they threw him out of the city so it's going on those same lines where they're trying to create you know a hue and cry and have him thrown out of the city so when uh, the companions of Paul were were seized even Paul wanted to go Okay, and he wanted to uh, give a defense for himself, but some of the other disciples did not let him go because they saw, you know, what a what a crazy situation it had become. And uh, some people among the officials also who knew Paul and they were happy about his teaching, they pleaded with him because they understood that if he continues over here uh, or if he goes in to explain, you know, in this in this kind of a situation. Uh, you know, something worse will happen. So they told him, okay, Paul, we know you want to go in there. You want to give an explanation and defend your yourself, your people, but please don't go in there. So all this is going on. At that time, there was uh, a person by the name of Alexander, okay, whom the crowds drew and uh, uh, the Jews put him forward and Alexander, you know, he tried to, stop this this cry which was rising up but people were actually not listening and the commotion continued where people were screaming uh, uh, you know their their uh, uh, praises to the goddess Dinah. so you know, we, this is set in our minds okay but uh, the uh, ministry went on well and now there is opposition rising against paul okay so just keep that in your mind we'll just come back and wrap it up the city of ephesus and then we will see you know how he proceeds further to many other places uh, we are actually out of time so let's uh, stop at this point and we will be back after 10 minutes yeah thank you